Good day to you. This is Lone Wolf from Nozzle Recordings, and I've had some requests on how to do um, a scratch looper. So I'm going to take you through one that I did, or one that I finished yesterday, which is this one. And of course, it's a scratch looper, so you want the loop, you want the the beats that you put in to the the little flash uh, movie to loop so you can endlessly uh, scratch over it without having to stop the uh, stop your computer and play the track again so it should leave you with this yes a different selection of beats which you can have on one two three four five I've got six buttons there um, or you can have it on as many different as different buttons as you want or do whatever you want really and you can have hyperlinks to all of these names and everything so that's what we're going to do today we're going to show you how to create this and I'm going to use all the temp well the diff the same t type of templates as I, uh, I use to do this it might not be a hundred percent exact but it's going to be nigh on okay so what I've got is I've got a program called Swish Max um, by the way, if you can hear my computer whirring in the background, it's um, unfortunately you just have to put up with it because it's it's fairly close to the microphone. There's no other way I can change it around. But uh, anyway, so yes, I've got this program called Swish Max. Lots of people people who who are watching this might have come across it before. There might be whizzes at it. I don't know. All I know how to do with it is make a scratch looper. So and that's why you're obviously watching this. So. Um, yes okay so what happens when you first load it up is this and you get this a sort of workspace should we call it here and what you should have you should have sort of an idea of what you would like to put in your looper so what pictures or whether you want to use uh, to cue the the beats up via an image or or text or, or whatever just so you should have just have some ideas so what I've done is I've put my different uh, things that I or items images that I want to have in my on my looper I've put it in here pretty prepared so this is what uh, this is what I did originally so I'm gonna you have to first of all you have to choose a background picture now, that one's for later but uh, this one there's my background picture there so it's in it's in a PNG, but I think you can drop over JPEGs. So it's literally just drag and drop. So you just drag and drop uh, that background into there. As you can see, it's not quite fitting there. Oh, it is. Oh, I think that's because I used it before. But usually, you can change. Just drag that, and that that will change your your actual workspace. But uh, in this case, it's bang on. So again, if you have a little picture, say that big, you can click on this, drag that down, and make it smaller to fit around your picture. Okay, so I'm just going to line that up there, and hopefully that should be in the bottom as well. That's fine. So that's your basic uh, background picture there, and that's one I have chosen. Now, what we want to be doing is Add in now in my one, as you see, I've got the our nozzle logo there, which is a bit of an animation, uh, like a, an effect on it. So we'll do that. We'll do that first. So I'll go back into my files, which I have pre-prepared. Click on my nozzle logo again. That's a PNG. Obviously, if it was a JPEG, you would have like a white background around this, but because it's a PNG, it, oh, that's coming really big. Hang on. So what you've got to do, if it comes in that big, it just means the resolution of that uh, of that logo is really big. I think it's Control and a minus, and that'll allow you to do that to zoom out. And if you press Shift, Shift, and just resize that and it keeps the aspect ratio so it's not uh, tall and slim or short and fat so just want to zoom back in so you can go down the bottom left hand corner here 
to 100% and that knocks it back up. You can change this workspace whenever you want. Now, I'm going to make that a little bit smaller, I think. About that size. Again, that's just using Shift to resize that. So I'm going to put that there. As with my one, as I said, it's, it's just moving a little bit. Now, the, it's very easy to add, the, to add an effect on. All you would do is right click, you go to effect, and you go down to. Just, there's, there's many different effects. These are the appear and position ones, there's the disappear from position ones. You can get looping continuously, and for every one that you put in, you can sort of change the parameters within that specific one. So, I'm going to choose oh, what I had it on. I think it was gravity. So, uh, where's gravity? Gravity. Are you there, gravity? Gravity, drop it. I think that might be it. So, I'll just click that. And as you can see in the top left hand corner, this is the timeline. So, it'll play all through the timeline and once it gets to this point it will repeat now oh the toolbars changed for some reason just drag them over okay so what you can do is this button up here is your preview button so this will make this work area come to life as if you had just rendered it. So it gives you it's a yeah, it's a preview of what you've just done. So we've just added an effect onto the nozzle layer of the timeline. Gravity drop and it's linked to this because it's highlighted. So we want to see what it does. So if we press play movie, there you go. And then it keeps looping to there and loop to there. Now if we gotta to make any more changes you've got to stop it. If you just click the effect, you can slow the effect down by dragging out the timeline. So then it's going to be slower because you've, dra you've dragged it out. Almost time stretched it. There you go. So that's going around a lot slower now. You can just change it around however you want. You can go 